Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna explain kind of the general overview of the programming. Basically, what's gonna be included every day, um, kind of like the sections and the blocks of the program. I'm not gonna kind of go over the specific mesocycles or uh, what actual movements might be there. Um, I'll do another video to get more in depth, but this is just a general overview. So each day when you look at the workout, no matter um, if you're in the foundations program, with the youth athlete program, or the weekend warrior program, or the competitors program, it's gonna follow this um, basic kind of outline. So you're gonna start off with uh, a warm up. Don't know if you can read that because this marker is dying. So we're gonna pick a better one. Um, but yeah, you're gonna start off with a general warm up. And when I say warm up, I'm not gonna write, spend three minutes on the bike. Uh, I mean, when you get into the gym, especially uh, if it's, it's cold and winter's coming up, you wanna get moving and we wanna get your heart rate up and we wanna get your blood flowing. But just sitting on the bike is very passive. We wanna think of the warm up as something as important as the workout. We can build some good movement patterns in the warm up, prepare our joints uh, in the range of motions that we're gonna be using. So if we're gonna be squatting, we wanna be really uh, doing a warm up where we're focusing on our hips and our knees and our ankles. So I think that you need to really focus on the warm-up. That's something that's very uh, different than maybe something you're used to with other programs or trainers or gyms. But the warm-up uh, shouldn't be considered something that can be skipped. That's where we get some good rep accumulation of um, basic movements. So nothing should be too challenging there, but there's are uh, important movements to do. After the warm-up, we're gonna kind of move into our uh, strength. And when I say strength, um, I mean, I could use a different word there because say we're doing back squats, we could be doing back squats with a focus on hypertrophy or back squats with a focus on um, power or speed. It really depends on kind of the time of year or what we're programming there and uh, a reminder that it will be noted. So it uh, depends on the rep ranges um, and kind of the periodization for this. But strength is generally where you're gonna see kind of a compound functional movement there. So whether it be a squat or a deadlift or a strict press, something like that, that's kind of like those general strength movements that you might be used to. Um, after the strength, we're gonna get into our accessories. Just abbreviated here. Uh, the accessories are very important and you might see similar movements in the warm up sometimes. Uh, so you should pay attention to the warm-up because you might see uh, movements here for the first time that then appear here later on, you know, in next weeks or months of the programming. So the accessory is, that's, that's the key of really keeping you um, kind of out of injury. There's gonna be a lot of important movements there that focus on building up kind of some weaker muscles or um, different movements that are a little bit less kind of compound and functional movements here, but very important movements to kind of building a bulletproof body. So I was actually thinking about calling this kind of like our bulletproof circuits, um, but yeah, we're gonna call it accessory work. There might be programmed rest, so a lot of them are gonna be superset, so you're gonna move through a few different movements. Uh, some of them will be not for time, which might say NFT, and that's where you just move at your own pace through them. Of course, I don't want you just sitting around and doing nothing, but you shouldn't be like <gasps> heart rate really high. Um, here, we might write in the rest. It really depends kind of on what the goal of the day is. So it might be program rest where you're doing a certain amount of movement, as many reps as you can for 30 seconds, and then you're resting another 30 seconds. But these are generally gonna be some kind of um, strength type movements performed in a circuit. After that, we're gonna get into our conditioning. Again, I'm not gonna really get into the, the energy systems. Uh, we're kinda gonna cover that in a different blog post. And I do explain the energy systems in the athlete guide, uh, just in a brief kind of paragraph. But here we're focusing on conditioning, whether it be short power outbursts, repeatable power, um, uh, sustained speed and power, or long aerobic conditioning. Um, we're gonna be working on kind of everything. Uh, you'll see workouts with varied movements, uh, different movement patterns, nothing should be too complicated. These workouts, you don't necessarily need like a functional fitness gym. You can probably do most of the workouts 
especially in the, the weekend warrior program, at like a general um, gym. And if you're missing some equipment, uh, there should be some scales in the program where, you know, say you don't have uh, an assault bike, you might go to a Schwinn Airdyne or just a general spin bike at the gym um, at a higher resistance. So it'll definitely write that in so that anyone going to kind of any level of gym has access and ability to do the program and get the same stimulus and adaptation that we want from the workout. Uh, so this is kind of like your main workout after you've done your strength and accessory and of course the warm up. After that, we're gonna get into our cool down. And that's kind of gonna be a recovery piece. Um, again, not a general cool down, don't just sit on the bike for uh, 20 minutes and don't do anything. It's gonna be something a little bit um, more movement than that. And again, important movements and rep schemes, uh, building up accumulation of important movements here. But it's gonna be done at a slower pace after you come off the conditioning so that you're feeling good and ready for the next day. So especially if we're doing a conditioning with like some hard anaerobic repeats, this might be something that's a little bit more aerobic to kind of flush out that lactic acid and get you feeling better for the next day. I know personally, uh, if I take a pure rest day and I'm not doing anything, I'm kind of sore, but I know if at the end of a hard day or on a rest day where I'm not doing anything, I do kind of like a nice aerobic, moving through different ranges of motion workout, I feel so much better the next day, my recovery is better. So this is where we're really focusing on recovery for the next session or especially for you guys, action sport athletes, um, you might be going later in the day to do your sport or the next day you have a rest day from the program, but you're gonna go do your sport and you don't wanna be sore from your training. It's important that uh, you're recovered and this is making you better at your sport, but we're not taking away from your sport. Um, after that, we're gonna do some mobility. And that's just getting you moving again through the full range of motion. Um, it might be a little bit of stretch, which is a good kind of CNS cool down to help your, your body kind of get into that parasympathetic state instead of being all hyped up. You're getting calm back down, help your recovery, or we might do some soft, soft tissue work. So basically different stuff to build your range of motion and your mobility is here. Um, and it kind of fits in with the recovery and cool down. So this is kind of the basic outline. We're gonna include kind of these six um, blocks in, in your programming. And again, uh, we'll make another video where we kind of go in depth on each one, but I hope this helps you kind of get an idea for how the program layout's gonna look and maybe some of the terms that you might see when it's written on the Train Heroic app.